Hi, everybody. Welcome in. We're going to just wait about a minute just to make sure that everybody can get in who's trying to get into the room, and then we'll begin. All right, thanks everybody. Um, welcome. Uh, my name is Melissa Cerrone, um, and I'm the grants manager at the Office of Arts and Culture for the City of Sacramento. And I would like to welcome you all to our webinar on the Seeding Creativity Grant for Sacramento County Artists. And I'm really thrilled to be able to talk to you about this experience, um, specifically because in my five years here at the city, this is the first grant that I've administered that's specifically and only for individual artists. And I really do think it marks an important, an important point in our evolution as a cultural agency. Um, just a little housekeeping, this is a webinar um, and we will be recording it. Um, and because it's a webinar, you're in listen mode only. I encourage you to put your questions in the Q&A, so don't put them in the chat, but please put them in the Q&A. Um, and I would also maybe encourage you to wait a bit before you put questions in because some things might be answered um, as we go along. And it's a large webinar, there are gonna be a number of people in it, and I wanna make sure that we get to all the questions, but we don't have to go through questions that maybe are being answered as we go along. Um, and at the end, we're definitely going to make time um, for questions and also hands raised. I would just maybe ask you not to do hand raised either because that's really hard for us to check. Um, I have to go through a lot of material. So if you could just sort of wait and hopefully I'll get to it and I'll, you know, maybe stop periodically as we go along and take some questions. Um, as they come up. But again, hold on to your questions as long as you can. Um, this uh, webinar is being recorded, as you probably have noticed. Um, and it usually takes a couple of days, but the recording will then be up on our YouTube channel so you can reference it um, at any time. If you just want to go back and refer to something, don't worry about taking notes if you don't need to. Um, but I really, I'm glad that you're here live listening to it because I always recommend um, one of the best things to do is to listen live to um, any kind of material that comes out because it gives you a chance to really pay attention to things as they're going along and gives you a chance to ask questions, but also to think about questions that other people have. Um, so thank you for coming here and sitting with us um, on this Wednesday afternoon. So um, next I'm gonna go to our, sorry, I'm gonna go to our agenda. Oops. Oops, it's not working here. Yep, there we are. Um, and this is what we're gonna be talking about today. We are gonna um, talk about who we are. So for those of you who don't know what we are as an office and what are some other opportunities that we have available. Um, we're gonna talk about regranting because this is a regranting program and the eligibility for it. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about the grant requirements. We're gonna talk about the disciplines that can apply and the pathways that we're using. Uh, we'll go through the application process. We will go through the rubrics and how the panel is gonna review the applications. We will um, talk a little bit about work samples because they're super important for this grant application. Uh, we'll go through the dates and the deadlines again. Um, and then at the very end, we'll take you actually through the application so you can see what it looks like um, in the portal, and we'll take time for Q and A. So, oops. next slide is, um, I think I went a little too far. Okay, so the Office of Arts and Culture, who we are. So um, some of you may never have worked with us before, and I wanna take a moment to tell you a little bit about the Office of Arts and Culture. 
Um, up until about three years ago, we were known as the Sacramento Metropolitan Arts Commission or SMAC, and we were a joint city county agency. But now we are a city office that partners on initiatives with the county, but we're run out of the city manager's office and we are a division of the Department of Conventions and Cultural Services. Um, and I mention this because as a city agency, there are certain contract procedures and requirements that all grantees must adhere to. Um, and I really wanted to call that out because we really are held to some standards that any city department would be held to when we're granting out public funds. So like any grant application, there are requirements that we will be asking of you. And some of them really are based on what city policies are and what we have to adhere to. Um, we do serve as the county, state, and local partner for funding, and we're recognized nationally as such, which is what allows us to apply on behalf of the county for federal and state grants, which is really important. It gives us access to these grants. We're also the office that developed the city's first plan for culture and the creative economy. And this plan, which is titled The Creative Edge, is a blueprint of what Sacramento has defined as its priorities for arts and culture and how we might advance this work. Our role in the city is to provide funding for the creative economy, to administer and partner on arts education programs, and to lead the arts and public places projects. And we are home to the city's office of film and media. And we are very proud to have been allotted $10 million of the city's American Rescue Plan relief funds, in addition to this program, so not even, this program isn't even part of that, um, in order to um, help the creative sector uh, recover from the effects of COVID-19. So that's a little bit about who we are. Um, other opportunities that I'd like to talk about. Um, this isn't the only grant, grant that we have open. Um, so before we talk about this grant, I want you to know um, that there are other things that might relate to your work and I want you to be aware of opportunities. So first we have the Sacramento Arts and Culture Match Program, which we've just launched with a national organization called In Our, Back, Our Own Backyards or IOB. And this grant is to help folks secure donations for local arts and culture projects in the city. So this is a match program and we will support matches one-to-one -one for up to $15,000 for any eligible project. So say you wanted to create art for a community garden in your neighborhood and the total cost would be $10,000 to get this artwork created. IOBI is an organization that would help you raise $5,000 from your own community and we would match it with $5,000 from the city. Um, and again, we will do this with programs that um, we can match up to $15,000. So it could be a $30,000 program, or it could be a $50,000 program. We can only match up to 15, but it's really significant. Um, and that's really geared towards maybe collaborative groups or people that really are working on a project. And um, it's more of a community-based project. It's something that you don't need a lot of money for and you wanna do it pretty quickly. This is a really wonderful grant opportunity and we're really happy about this. Um, the other grant that we just closed, but new rounds will be opening again, is the Sacramento Film and Media Grant. Um, we have rolling deadlines for this, and it's specific to provide funding for film and media projects shot in Sacramento. And it'll help to pay either the production fees or the post-production support for films that have locations in Sacramento. So those are two other programs that are ongoing now. Um, and information about all of these programs can be found at arts.cityofsacramento.org slash grants. Um, so the final thing that I wanna talk to before we get into this grant is um, because it's been in the news a bit lately, I'd like to just talk a few minutes about the guaranteed income grant because you probably heard about it and I don't want this grant to be confused with the guaranteed income grant for individual artists. Um, that program is not 100% finalized and probably won't be open for several months. So we don't have all the details on that program, but it's gonna be different from this one in a few ways. And I just wanna differentiate those ways for you. Um, for that grant, the payments will be made over a two year period and they're gonna be made periodically. So they could be made monthly or quarterly or in some periodic form. Um, for that, there will be no requirements to produce a final product. So once you're in for guaranteed income, uh, no strings attached. 
tax. You are funded for that program. Um, unfortunately, you'll only need to be a Sacramento resident, so it's not for county artists. Um, that's funded with um, funds that can only be used for the city of Sacramento, so you'd have to be a city resident. Re resident. Um, and we won't do a peer selection for that process. It's likely to be some kind of a randomized process to award those grants. Um, so I want to be clear, we don't have all the details yet, but please note that the grantees of seeding creativity, so if you apply for this grant and you are accepted, you will not then be able to apply for the GBI grant. It's going to be one or the other. Um, our goal really is to spread the funds across the field as widely as possible. Um, there will more likely be more grants awarded for the GBI program, but I'm also guessing that that pool will be larger too. And the total amount received for each artist from that grant is likely to be only slightly higher than this one. So over the two years, we project that those grants will be $10,800 rather than this grant, which is $10,000. So it's pretty equivalent. Um, what I'm really telling people is if you feel like you're qualified for this grant, please, please apply. Um, your chances are always better at getting a grant if you apply for more than one at a time. So. Um, I encourage you to do that. Okay, so what is um, seeding creativity? Um, this is really why we're here today. Seeding creativity is a regranting program and it's sp specific to individuals in Sacramento County. So the National Endowment for the Arts received funding from the Federal American Rescue Plan Program to distribute funds to regions hard hit by the pandemic. We could apply for funds either to go to cultural organizations or to individuals. So because of the lack of other relief opportunities for individual artists, our office decided to apply for and received a grant to develop this program that specifically allows us to provide stipends of $10,000 each to 45 artists in the county. So when you review the guidelines, you're gonna see a lot of language that wasn't specifically developed by the city. You're gonna see if, if those of you looked at the guidelines specifically, you can look at appendix one and appendix two. Um, they're pretty long and they're also some language that's peppered throughout the grant that comes specifically from the NEA. We have to adhere by their guidelines and what they're requesting of us. So we had to pass that down into the grant application. It absolutely applies. Um, you should review it really carefully because these are the elements that we need to adhere to so that we can get the money to you and fulfill our obligations to the GREE granting um, agency. Who's the grant for? Um, who can apply for this grant? Because one criterion for this grant is that a tangible project must be created or completed by the end of the grant period, we might say that this program is best for originating artists. So that would be a playwright instead of an actor, a choreographer rather than a dancer. But we also know that the lines of your disciplines are much more blurred than that. So an actor could create a workshop for youth with autism, for example. A dancer could decide they wanna create a new work for their company that expands the traditional role of a dancer. So ultimately we think that you can best define what it means to you to be an originating artist. So we are not being terribly specific about that, but again, know that it's to create something that's gonna have a tangible project at the end. Um, we're gonna ask you to choose a pathway. So the four pathways that we've create are, created are creation, presentation or performance, social impact and research. And then your application should relate in every way to the pathway that you've chosen. So you have to pr produce a tangible product at the end of the project. And by tangible, we mean, we have to be really specific, something that can be felt, touched or experienced directly. Um, and I will caution all applicants to be as realistic as possible. If your project revolves too heavily on elements outside of your control, for example, a very specific location or only one company of dancers being available and you must work with this very one company. Um, or if you have to raise additional funds to make it happen and you can't fulfill it during the grant period, there are no extensions to this program and you would have to return the funds. So we have to be very, very firm on that. So I just wanna caution everybody to 
you know, be as bold as you can, but again, look at it as realistically as possible. If for any reason there are, you know, shutdowns or things kind of close up again, what can you realistically do and feel confident about that you can complete in a one year period? That's really important. Um, so just be ambitious, but realistic, if that makes any sense. Um, eligibility, um, you must be 18 years of age or older when you submit the application. Yeah. So by the application deadline, actually. Um, and we will ask for those who are funded, we're gonna actually ask for um, proof of eligibility and you'll see that in a little bit. You have to be a Sacramento County resident throughout the entire contract. Um, again, don't have to be in the city, but Sacramento County. Um, you cannot be in a full-time degree program. And you have to have a three-year recent history of creating, performing, presenting, exhibiting, or publishing work. Um, and we'll be a little flexible in terms of what recent is because, again, of the pandemic. And some of you really had to curtail a lot of what you've done, but we are going to ask that you know, three years or up two to three years out of the last five years, um, you can document that you've been doing work. So um, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a grant for people who are new to creating or presenting work or to people who are extremely experienced, but we do want you to have that, um, you know, medium range of experience. Um, so that's how you're eligible. Who would be ineligible for this? Um, unfortunately, this is one of the few programs that we cannot accept public art projects. So no murals or no sculptural installations. This is an NEA generated requirement and we have to be really firm on this. So please don't present anything that's gonna be a public art project. Um, we can't accept applications from folks who serve as executive directors, managing directors or artistic directors at any organization that's been recently funded by our office. Um, again, it's important for us to get these funds into the hands of those who have not had access before. Um, and if you're being paid by an organization in any way to do your work, you already have access to city funds. Um, please don't quit your day job. We're going to go by the information that we already have in hand. So if you've applied, for example, for the, um, Calif uh, the Cultural Arts Awards as a director of one of those organizations, you would be ineligible. But we encourage you to tell other people in your organization that they might be able to apply. Um, and again, as I keep saying, anyone who can't produce a final project in a one year period, and that'll be over the next year. So the disciplines, we um, thought they were about as broad as possible. Craft, dance, design, folk art, literary arts, media arts, music, multidisciplinary arts, theater, and visual arts. Um, I am sure it's not all inclusive and I bet there's somebody out there saying, but what about you know the culinary arts or whatever it might be? Um, and we did have to draw some boundaries on this and really make sure that we are getting these grants, at least our first opportunity to individual artists, to people who are really solidly working in the artistic field. So that's why we chose that. Um, now we're gonna take a look at the pathways. Um, and we really followed the NEA's definition of eligible pathways to give many different types of artists the opportunity to explore the areas that are most representative of the ways they like to work and the projects they wanna pursue. So we'll just go through each one quickly um, and see how you are defined in that way. So creation obviously is probably the most um, you know, popular one that people would be coming in under and creation is a project in which the creation of an artwork is central and which the artist functions primarily as an artist and draws upon the artist's creativity and problem solving abilities. So you know, an obvious example is making visual artwork creating a dance, a work of poetry, um, an album, a film, a graphic novel, um, probably the easiest category to define. Um, then there's performance and presentation. So this is a project that involves public engagement with and access to the art form, and that's essential. The outcome of this project will necessitate a public component. So for example, are you reinterpreting a Shakespeare play and you wanna perform it in a neighborhood center? Um, would you like to present a lecture on spoken word art as a form of social emotional learning to a parent teacher group in your schools? 
Or have you always wanted to produce a day of drumming at a local park? Those are all examples of categories that we would put into performance and presentation. Um, the next is research. And for our purposes, this would be a research project related to the development of an artistic practice. So a new series or new work. Examples might include background research associated with a new play development or an authored work exploration of new methods within an artistic practice, and investigations on the impact of artistic practice related to social change. And finally, social impact. Um, and this is a project that utilizes the artistic process to create positive change by addressing social injustice and challenges. Social impact projects may address racial in inequity, disability, health equity, climate change, housing insecurity, neighborhood vitality, economic disparity, among many other things. Um, now, some of you may think, well, you know, I might be creating something, but it also might have social impact. We really encourage you just lean into the one that you feel is the strongest piece of what you do. If you, who you are inherently as an artist is a social impact, social practice artists lean into this pathway. But again, make sure that all of your application materials kind of feed this type of a, of a project. So those are um, just the pathways that we're gonna ask you to choose from. So if you're funded, what are the um, Office of Arts and Culture's requirements of the grantee? Um, we will require all grantees to check in periodically about their work with either the staff or a mentor that will support them throughout this project. And we may ask you to document the hours spent and self-report them periodically. Um, so it's not going to be onerous, but we want to hear from you and we are going to be asking you to be checking in periodically with us in, in a way that's really appropriate. Um, we're gonna ask for a summary at the end of the project and it's most likely gonna be a simple written report. And we'll definitely ask for documentation that we will share with the NEA and we'll share on our website. Our goal is to really document this program and to promote every single funded project. So that would include a video, audio or digital images, whatever is most appropriate for the type of project that you do. So the federal requirements, if you're funded, there are requirements that go beyond just our office and the federal government, because again, these are American Rescue Plan um, dollars that we're spending. Um, I've said it many times, but complete the proposed project. Make sure you're gonna do something that you can complete and show us that it is complete. Um, spend the funds on eligible expenses and in the guidelines, again, in the appendix, there's a big long laundry list of eligible expenses. I think they'll fit most every type of project, but just make sure that you're spending within those eligible amounts or you're just spending it on the time that you're putting into the project. That's perfectly fine, but just stay away from anything that might be ineligible. Um, and we just asked you to keep any records, um, expenses, how you spent your time, anything that you've been asked to hold on to, keep them separately, keep the grant records for at least three years because um, we've been told that um, any of these projects could be audited during that period of time. So just keep track of that. So how will the applications be reviewed? Um, obviously we, we always do or almost always do a peer panel process and um, our peer panels are comprised primarily of leading artists and practitioners around the country and some community members. So less likely artists within the community, but people who understand the community and understand the landscape. Um, we don't want anybody to feel like they're in direct competition or there are too many conflicts of interest, but we like to make sure that we have the, the um, greatest amount of experts, but also people who understand the Sacramento County community. Um, and we always use a rubric um, to help the peer panel um, understand how the application should be looked at and to make sure that there is as much um, clarity in terms of how they're judging and to take as much of the subjective element out of it as is possible in any kind of process like this. Um, and the three areas that we're gonna be looking at, and again, please read the guidelines really carefully because the rubrics and the guidelines, so you'll understand what the panel will be looking for in your work. 
So the first thing is originality. Is your work unique? And this is obviously not just the project that you're proposing, but your past work. Is it um, unique? Is your concept unique? Are you doing something that challenges or moves your art form forward? And are you advancing the discipline? So how original is your work? How is it differentiated from other work that they're going to be seeing? Um, technical skill, have you mastered the tools of your discipline? And can we see your point of view in your work? That's really important. And do your work samples really highlight your skill? We'll be talking about work samples, but obviously when we're looking at technical skill, your work samples are probably going to be one of the primary ways that the panel is going to be reviewing technical skill. Um, and community impact, that's so important to the Office of Arts and Culture. Um, and it's often woven in most of our grant applications in some way or another, but um, is your work rooted in historically marginalized or underinvested communities? Is it driven by your community's input and values? Or does it explore cross-sector issues? All of those aspects can lean towards community impact. So what's in the application? We hope we've designed an application that's pretty straightforward and pretty easy to figure out. But um, you know, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about the nuances of the application, but it's not gonna be a long application for you to work on, but we really would like you to put the care into it. Um, so it's um, found in submittables and you can find that at sacmetroarts.submittable.com. And we'll have information on that. We can probably put that in the chat later, or you can find it again on our website on the grants page. Um, you're gonna be asked a couple of basic eligibility questions. So we're gonna go through those a little bit later. It's just making sure that you're not gonna fill out the whole application. And then we go and look at it and find out you live in uh, Yolo County. You don't even live in Sacramento County. So um, if you can answer these eligibility questions and you can move on, then you go into your other questions. And then it's pretty simple. It's the identifying questions, the, you know, what's your name, where do you live, um, what's your email address, those basic questions. Um, there is an artistic statement um, and a project concept. And rather than having you upload some format of the statement or the artistic concept, we're asking you to respond to three little questions within the text box, and you will create your artistic statement and your project concept right there. Um, there is a work history form, and we ask you to, again, we don't want to see resumes, we don't want to see CVs, we want to see um, fill out this work history form. You're only allowed to put in 20 entries at the most, but we're just asking you, what have you done in the recent years? Um, maybe where have you done it? What's the format? And we give you some examples so you can see how to make this work for different types of projects. Um, and of course, the work samples. And those are something that you're going to upload. So again, as I said, we're not going to look at resumes, CVs. We don't want to see any promotional material or anything else that isn't requested. Um, I can't stress this strongly enough. If it's not something that we've requested, we won't look at it and we may actually take it out of the application before the panelists, the panelists won't be able to look at those things. So just be really clear that you're just submitting the things that we need. Um, I am gonna go to the Q&A for a quick minute before we move on to the next thing. And again, we'll be checking it um, as we go along. So um, don't worry if you haven't got a question in yet. Um, share the recording later. Yeah, I'm sorry if you missed it at the beginning. Um, it's all going to be on our YouTube channel. Um, there will always be a link to where it can be found on our website. So if you go back to our grant page on the website, you'll see where the recording is. So yes, absolutely. Can a project include more than one pathway? Absolutely not. Just one pathway. You'll only be allowed to select one. Um, and yes, you will ask to uh, address that pathway in the application. Um, what if you're whoops, what if you're a volunteer with the title managing director of a funded organization? Yeah, I'm sorry, we're pretty strict on that. If you're listed as the managing director, you are not going to be able to apply. Um, do you need a CV, budget, and project plan? No, no, no. You don't need any of those. Remember, we're going to be giving you a stipend. Um, it's not going to be a, you know, something that's reimbursable for expenses. We are going to select our artists and trust that they're going to use the $10,000 to complete that project in whichever way they want. Um, how could we define, how could you define the product from research path 
such as publication, art production. Um, you know, a publication or an art production, I don't necessarily, if you only want to do the research portion of it, then you propose for the research of it. If you're actually going to complete the work, then you're going to propose for the work. Um, and some of these questions we can, you know, if, if they feel like they're really so specific, we can answer them offline. Um, if you have a current contract for the Office of Arts and Culture that ends June 30th, are you eligible up to apply for this grant? Um, probably, I'd have to know what that is. So again, that's a specific question that I would answer offline. Um, I'm a theater artist and have been working on a project for several years. Um, not that I am expecting to finish within the timeline. Does the grant require the work start after the grant is given? Yes, it does. It really should be a new project. So this is not for pre-existing projects and you're welcome. Um, do you only want recent years or if there are more significant pre-COVID events, you could include, yeah, you absolutely can include them, but I wanna make sure that you have included those recent years that we asked for. So include both, but if there's something significant that you wanna put in there, yes, please feel free. If you have multiple ideas, can you apply from, no, you can only apply for one application per person. So go with your strongest idea and your strongest pathway. Is cover, covering travel expenses an eligible expense? Um, I'd have to go back and look at the guidelines. Please go through and look at the appendix on the guidelines. I don't have, happen to have it in front of me, but that's going to tell you whether you can use travel. That's one of the areas that I'm a little, I had forgotten about that one. Um, what happens if all the funds aren't used in the space of the year? Um, you have to use all the funds in the space of the year. Again, it's a stipend for artists. So think of it in that way. Um, all I need to know is I don't need to see how you've broken down what you've done. I need to know that you've proposed something and you've done it. That's really all we need to know. But yeah, don't um, get yourself in a situation where you have to give money back. Um, I will just answer a couple more and then we'll keep going um, and we'll get back to the rest of the question. Will there be a set number of grants for each pathway? If so, do you foresee certain pathways being more competitive than others? Um, thank you for this question. It's something that we ruminated about a lot. No, there won't be a set number. We really are going to try to go with the 45 best projects. I would be very surprised if we don't at least have some in every pathway. So again, lead with your strongest project, one that reflects the work you've done before and the project that you want to do now. Um, will this grant be offered again? Oh, I certainly hope so. Um, this is really special funding that we are pretty thrilled to have gotten, um, getting $450,000 to uh, re-grant to the community is pretty amazing. And hopefully this is just the beginning of more work that we can do. Um, and I'll answer this one and then we'll go back and I, I promise I will come back to the rest of these questions. As a visual artist, a painter, is there a disadvantage to apply outside of my discipline? I've created video content before and want to do a media arts project video. Um, that's a really also a really good question because the panel is going to be looking at your work samples. So again, um, if you're a visual artist and your strongest work samples are digital images of your visual work, you really need to find a way to connect your work in your proposal to the new work you want to do. Um, I encourage you to look towards that type of a project, but make sure that, the, that you've found a way to make a connection um, so that the panel feels like you are in a strong position to move from visual arts to media arts, which I think seems like a perfectly natural connection. Um, I do want to give a shout out right now. I'm going to stop the Q&A for a bit. Um, I want to give a shout out. We are going to have some mentors who are going to be helping with grant writing. Um, I believe we have, I, I think we have four or six, some of them might be here today. So shout out if you are here, um, thanks for coming. Um, and they can help you answer some of these like thornier questions about how you proceed with your own specific grant application. Um, I really encourage you to go to our website. There's a little place where you can sign up for, you know, little chunks of time with the mentors. 
Uh, they could fill up quickly and we'll see what we can do if, if they fill up so quickly that we need room for more. Um, but right now, um, I, I think that's a great way for you to get a little bit of help and, and maybe just throw some ideas out and get some more questions answered. Um, so let me move forward and um, talk a little bit about work samples. Um, again, because this is a really important piece of your application, we are leaning heavily into your work samples. Um, so first thing is please follow the directions carefully and take the time to submit your best work. Um, we've made the application itself simple, but you have over a month before the deadline to create, select, or edit down your work samples. And we're being really very specific here in what and how much we will accept so that everyone is as, as close to being on a level playing field and the panel can easily see um, all of the work samples and get through numerous applications. Um, so we're going to be really, you know, very conscious of directing you and how to do your work samples and doing them in the right way. Um, if your work is primarily visual, submit up to 10 digital images. Um, if you feel that audio represents you best, five minutes, no more than five minutes of an audio file. Um, Video, we will, we're going to be really firm on this. We can only accept five minutes of video. Um, and you, we're asking you not to upload video. There is not a way to upload video. We're going to need a YouTube link for your video um, because that really is the most accessible way for panelists to be able to look at video. Um, and if your work is primarily in a written format, submit only up to 10 pages of a work. So if you're a spoken word artist, for example, we'd probably rather have a video than a text. If you're a choreographer, please don't submit photos of your dance. We need to see the movement. And if you're performing or presenting, don't submit audio only, even if your discipline is in music. Panelists really want to see performance. Um, if you're primarily a composer and everything you do is in a studio, of course, please feel free. Audio is fine. Um, but if we have a video of work being performed, it might be more impactful. Um, and we don't want to see any video where you're talking about or describing your work. We want to see the work in action. We don't want to hear you telling us about the work. It really doesn't even matter what type it is. We want to see the work that you're doing. So it's just documentation. Um, please don't submit more work samples than are requested. Um, we say no more than two forms. We prefer just one. We prefer you stick to one. But if you really feel like I must show you video and some digital images, um, you can do that, but again, probably try to stick to um, one format if possible. And I'm getting a message from um, one of my colleagues here about this. Okay, my mic is picking up rustling, which I tend to do while I'm doing this, so I'm sorry about that. Um, so um, those are the ways that we want to see the work samples. Um, if you submit too much, we're going to choose for you what can be looked at and that's not the way you want to have your work seen you really want to have you want to have control over what you put out there um i've already gotten a couple of applications in i mean the application opened on monday and i think yesterday we had a few and i had a few minutes to go into those applications um and it was clear that i was looking at some really interesting artists but i felt like they had probably rushed the application for whatever reason and just uploaded things really quickly and uploaded, you know, 10 different types of work samples and didn't fill out other things as thoroughly. So I would really um, want you to take more time and, and take time to look at it. And if any of you are who already submitted that application are here, um, we, we can talk about you being able to go back and revisit that application and, and just take a little bit more time on that because um, that's why we're giving you all of this time to work on it, not because it's a hard application because it isn't, but we want you to be able to put your best foot forward on that. So thanks. Um, and I think this may be the last um, slide before we get into the application. 
Um, but a few work sample tips, um, and again, the mentors can probably provide more. And um, if there seems to be a need and an appetite for it, we could maybe even do a little work sample webinar um, in a week or two, if that would be really helpful. So feel free to let us know if you think that's something that would help. Um, we ask that you don't put any names on the work samples. Um, as we review the applications, um, the panelists will know the names of the artists, but when we do the public review, you will be um, listed as applicant one, two, three, four, five. So we'd like the identifying work samples not to have any other information. It should just really be the work sample. Um, there is a work sample um, description that you can write in. So if you need to tell us, for example, the names of the works of art or some of the collaborators on them, there will be room to put that in a separate place. Um, don't exceed the amount requested. I already said that. So make sure that you're only uh, sending us the work samples that we've asked and don't feel like more is better because usually more is not better. Um, use the formats described. Um, so we're very specific when we say um, video, YouTube, uh, you know, a certain audio file, digital images, the formats are all written in the application. Um, do not send any promotional material. We won't look at promotional material. We would take it out. So I don't want to see flyers or um, any other work um, that promotes. So no links embedded in anything for people to go look at other materials nothing about your website, it all should really live in the work samples. Um, obviously select the strongest and best quality you can provide. Um, if you don't have you know, good quality um, images of your artwork, really think about, you know, should it, can I go and shoot them in a way that really um, highlights the artwork and, and um, shows it to its best advantage. So really think about that. Um, and your work sample should connect to your application. So um, if there seems like a real disconnect, if your work sample is um, five minutes of improv theater and your application is about, you know, creating um, a project that has to do with, I don't know, anything that, that may have to do with visual arts. Um, there, there, you could be an artist that works in many different formats, but there would be a disconnect to the panel so that they should see work samples. Um, and super important if you're going to do something like, um, you know, research or social impact projects, really think about how your work samples tie everything together and really help illustrate who you are as an artist. So um, that's it. And we can talk a little bit more when we get into the application. Um, the dates and deadlines, we've already passed too, so we are right on schedule for those. May 16th, the application opened, so it is there and it works because we do have applicants in the system already. Um, this is the webinar tonight. Um, we'll probably try to do another Q&A, um, probably um, early June, maybe the first week of June or something for people who might be struggling or have more questions that they just want to sit and ask questions. We'll try to do that. And again, we'll keep you all posted about those. Um, the application closes June 20th. Um, the awards, hopefully, will go out August 8th. They do have to go to our Arts Commission, so that would be August. Um, in the meantime, obviously, the panel would be reviewing them and making their decisions. And we propose the funding would start September 1st. So your grant period would be September 1st, 2022 to August 31st, 2023. And that would be um, pretty firm. We do say in the guidelines that um, all of this could be subject to adjustment. The only thing that we would not adjust obviously is we would not make the application close any sooner than June 20th, but please use that as your date. Um, if something causes us to have to push any of our other deadlines back, um, we, we may have to do that, but this should be as pretty as pretty close as, as we think it's gonna be. So we're ready to go back to questions um, and I will go back um, and answer some more questions that, um, and again, I'm going totally to the Q&A um, rather than the chat. And after I do this round of questions, I really do want to go to the two application or the application form that Diana is going to get up for us in a few minutes. Uh, whoops, sorry. Whoops, sorry. Whoops.
I guess I can probably close all of this. Then have I done my stop share? This looks like I have not, but I'm a little bit frozen you've, here. You've stopped sharing. Okay. I can't quite get back to the, the webinar. So I can't see my cue in it. There it is. All right, questions. Um, does the 20 entry work history have to be related to the art you're doing or is it your whole work history? Um, it should be recent. Um, again, it should be related to the art that you're doing um, because again, we wanna make sure that everything is kind of connecting, that there is a sense that uh, what you're proposing relates to what you've done in the past. Does your experience have to be in the genre that you're proposing? Um, it absolutely doesn't. Again, your, your goal is to make your application as competitive as possible. Um, if there are 45 grants chosen and there are 300 applicants, then you know you have to figure out how do you how does your proposal rise to the top? So you want to make sure that things fit together as well as possible. Um, again, do we need to propose only one project or multiple? No, please propose one project because that's again gonna make it the strongest application. Um, can you explain the full-time degree exclusion a bit more? Again, it's just um, the focus is really on working artists um, and we, we like to think of our working artists as full-time working artists. So if you're in a degree program, you may have other opportunities to make work or to be able to you know, work through this process. Um, you could probably make a wonderful argument as to why um, people in a full-time degree program should be allowed, but we had to make some kind of decisions about moving forward. And this is pretty standard for these types of grant applications. So it was just a decision that we made, um, yeah. Um, are you eligible if you're a program director for a funded organization, but not the artistic or managing director? Um, yes, probably. Again, you know, think about what your role is there. Think about if you are being paid to do your art in that job. Is that a conflict with doing this work? I mean, you're, it's up to you to apply and, and make that decision for yourself. Can the artwork produced be sellable? Yes, it can. Obviously, it is your artwork. It can be sellable. That should not be part of your project. So please don't talk about um, selling the work as um, part of your project concept or creating um, you know, sort of a sales mechanism because that is excluded by the NEA. But absolutely, um, this work is your own at the end and you can do with it what you want to be doing. If you're a part owner of a small biz that applied for IOB, are you still, yeah, you are still eligible for the individual grant. Yes, if you're working with IOB, yes. Um, will there be resources to help us complete the final project or just the grant? There will not be any financial resources to do the final project. The $10,000 is to do the project. So make sure, um, obviously you don't wanna do a project that you're losing money on. So make sure that this is a project that a $10,000 stipend can really support you in doing. Um, so that's why I say be really very realistic. Um, what if my work is not about marginalized communities? Am I not eligible? You're absolutely eligible. So you know, just um, put your best application forward. Can you clarify the definition of public art as disincluded? Does it mean art that's created in partnership or sponsored by a public entity? Murals and sculptures appear, um, seemed a bit vague. I'm sorry if it seems vague. Um, anything that would be anything that would be exhibited on in a public way. And that's why it's the sculpture installation. You can create a sculpture, but it would be if you were installing the sculpture in a public space. Um, it's just because the National Endowment for the Arts has very specific um, 
obligations around um, documenting anything that is in the public site um, in terms of historic preservation. There's just a lot of specifics that the NEA would require that would take more work and more time than this grant application could um, contain. So we have to make that um, excluded. But you know, a lot of, you know, doesn't mean you couldn't you couldn't be a muralist who could do a different type of project. Um, has an artist who has received funded from a granted arts organization for a totally different project be eligible? So I'm guessing you're saying you're an artist who was hired by um, an arts organization. Yes, absolutely. As long as you're not part of like a staff member or an artistic director or something, that's that would be eligible. Are documentaries created with a social impact eligible? Absolutely. Media arts, yes. Um, can you clarify, we can't apply for an ongoing project that still me. No, you can't. I mean, it's really specific in the guidelines. Um, this is for new projects only. So I'm sorry, um, if there is a new project you wanna pursue, um, you feel free to do that with this project. Can grants be used for materials or equipment necessary to facilitate the project? Definitely for materials. Again, go look at the list um, that we've provided in the attachment to see if there's any equipment that might be um, ineligible. There may be some very specific things, but they that would tend to be like, you know, maybe some capital projects or things like that. How could a painter participate? This doesn't seem to apply to painters. Um, well, if the painter is creating a work of art, you apply under creation. So it absolutely applies to painters. Um, eligible funds are going to be listed on the website. Um, we're gonna list the projects, not the funds. So when somebody has completed a project, we really want to draw attention to that project because it was funded with this program. Um, and our goal is to create a program that's really successful so that the city can see the amount of creative work that's happening, um, what artists are doing. If you can give an artist $10,000 and say, go out and create a project um, that's meaningful to you, what kinds of wonderful things could happen with that money? And we really want to promote that. Um, is this the most you can request? Um, I don't know where you're getting 7.5 or 15. Every grant is $10,000. You don't request an amount. It's just going to be a, um, you know, just a flat fee. Um, can you design creative items about a social impact that a business might use? Um, I'd have to know more information. It sounds really interesting. So um, that's something that probably you can um, think about a little bit more and talk to one of the mentors about and see how the idea develops. But it does sound interesting to me. Um, did anybody tell you thank you for taking the time to intensely share these details with us? Um, you're welcome. Yeah, thank you. We're, we're really happy to do this. Um, for community projects, does it need to be offered to the community for free or can it be a ticketed event or a production? Um, um, it can be a ticketed event or production, but um, the creation, if then you would be applying more for the creation of the work. I'm thinking if you're presenting the work, um, you just wanna make sure that the expenses that you're incurring are also offset by your ticketing the event, which would mean kind of a, a double dipping of funds. So that's something that we'd probably wanna explore a little deeper. Um, if I propose a film version of something that comes out of a live performance based piece, is that considered an old project? No, it's not. That sounds like a new project to me. Um, does being selected for this grant automatically disqualify the artist from other funding opportunities? We don't have a lot of opportunities right now for individual artists. The only one that it would disqualify you for is applying for the guaranteed basic income. But as I said earlier, the amounts are pretty similar. So, um, you'd have to turn this one down if you were funded and take your chances in the 
sort of lottery pool of the guaranteed income. So that would be your decision. Um, will my chances increase if I hire local and ultimately do my album launch at a local theater through a local nonprofit? Oh, I should say this, anything that you're doing, that you're presenting the work needs to be Sacramento County. I'm, I'm sorry that this is really about, if you're creating the work, um, feel free to create it for any purpose. If you're presenting or performing, has to be at least something done in Sacramento County. And then obviously you could do it, you know, throughout the country after that, but there needs to be at least a local component because, you know, we, we wanna support you and your work, but we also wanna support the community. Um, I'm leaving this weekend for Europe for two months. Can I have the mentor time? Well, um, you have to sign up and if there's anything available, please do. Um, <clears throat> Can you use a mix of digital images and video? You can, but I'd wanna make sure that there was a really good reason that you were doing that. And if you feel like um, it's important to do both, yes, you can't do more than two different forms. So if you're doing digital and video and there's a really good reason for you to do both, go ahead and do it, but don't exceed 10 images and five minutes of video. Um, if I'm the main artist for this project, but want to contract a consultant to provide their guidance, creative advice, can I use the grant funds to pay them their consultation fees? Um, I do believe any consultants you hire are eligible. Um, yes, but you know, so if you need other people, sure. But you would be the only artist. So don't put it down as a collaborative project. You're the artist that would be funded. It's your work that we need to look at. So the consultant's work wouldn't be eligible to look at. It's you, your work, and then you go and hire who you need. Um, I think there's more questions. And I'm just wondering for those who don't want to go through all the questions, because we've been here um, about an hour, if we could just go through the application. And then I promise we can get through the rest of the questions, because there's so many of them. And I want to be respectful of everybody's time. So if Diana could put up the application, that'd be great. Okay, so this is where you're gonna land when you come into it. It's going to be on submittables, as you see, SAC Metro Arts, submittable.com, the links on the website. And this is the application, Seeding Creativity. The guidelines are also attached, so you can find them there. But if you're ready to apply, um, it's going to give you some basics about the guidelines, um, and then it's going to ask you some eligibility questions. Are you a resident of Sacramento County? Yes, hopefully. And are you over the age of 18 on the day you submitted the application? Yes. Next. There you go. Allows you into the application. So that's really what it is um, for eligibility. Um, now we get into the basic information, contact information. Um, so that's how you prefer to be listed or, or referred to. But if a legal name is different, we would like to know your legal name. So we do require that. Obviously, everything with a red asterisk is required. Your address, we will only take um, residential addresses, no mailing addresses. So if you submit a mailing address, even though that's where eventually you would need to get checks sent to you if you were funded or whatever, that's fine, but don't put it here in the application. This is residential addresses only. So if we don't have a residential address, um, we will probably get back to you and say, either provide us one or be disqualified. Um, there's a little quirk to this application is that the, um, kind of explanatory information about the application is underneath the little boxes. So um, always go and look at that because it's going to help you with a little bit more information. So it tells you the thing about your residential um, address, but it's just underneath where you provide your address, your preferred phone number, email address, and here's where you select your primary discipline. Um, drop down menu, just choose. Obviously, it's only going to let you choose one. Um, but one could be multidisciplinary art. So if you feel like you don't fit into just one genre, then put multidisciplinary. Um, you can select, if absolutely necessary, a secondary discipline. If you feel like 
um, your work really does fall within two disciplines and it's not multidisciplinary in that same way. Um, and then you select a pathway. And again, the four pathways we discussed. Um, we do ask um, the primary address where the project will take place. So if your project is gonna be performed in a specific place, that would be the address, the venue name. But if it's really you're creating work in your home and it's your residential address, then just put that back there too. That's totally fine. Um, and your, your relationship to this location. So again, is it your studio? Is it a site that you've contracted with a venue? Is it an office? Is it your residence or is it something else? And that's perfectly fine. Um, so here's the meat of the application, the artistic statement and the project concept. Um, and it's really important that you read through the artistic statement, um, what we're asking for. And then we've broken it down into three parts. And it's really important for you to address every one of these three parts um, in some way. If it doesn't apply to you, you can easily put not applicable or put something very short if you don't have a lot. It's not about how much you have to say. It's just about how you've responded to the three elements. And we do say, and I think we asked you there to write A, B, and C. And a couple of applications I've gotten in already have not done that. So I just want to call that out because it's important for the panelists to be able to um, look at your application. And the character limit is 2,500 characters. It's not huge, it's not small, but I think it's enough to, to really answer these questions. Um, and same thing with your project concept. Describe the work that you plan to carry out, describe the community impact you hope to achieve, um, and what issues or concerns or explorations. They don't have to be issues. They can just be things you want to explore. And we ask that in your project concept, and it's also 2,500 characters. Um, and then your professional history. So it should include publications, public performances, exhibition shows, lectures, events, and other activities that demonstrate at least three years of recent public activity. Um, this list should be a representative list and doesn't need to include everything you've ever done during this period. Just a sample to show you've been working professionally on your craft for at least three years and the variety of ways you've worked with the public. Um, and we say the history should include the three most recent years you've been working um, and at least two of the last five years must be included in this. So we know that the pandemic's been around for over two years, but if you can't put anything that's happened in the last um, three years, um, we would, disqualify you from this, but certainly the last five years gives you enough of a of a window to put that in. And we've just put in some examples. So we ask you put in the date, um, put in an activity. So for one person, it might be a photo exhibition. It could be a poem and a publication. It could be participating in a poetry slam competition. Um, what was the title of the event or activity or publication? If it had one, if it's not applicable, you can put that but we'd like to see the title. And again, what's the venue, the location, the publication. Um, so I made up a gallery name. This, I don't think this really exists in Davis, California. So be that specific. Here's the gallery, here's the city, here's the state. Um, a magazine that's in New York. Um, you were performing at the Comedy Spot in Sacramento. Those are just examples. And we have 20 spaces for you to utilize if needed. So. Um, and then we get to your work samples. And as you can see, we tell you the formats that you can submit. So digital images up to 10. If you don't really want to submit 10 and you don't have 10 that you feel like you need to submit, submit five, submit six, but no more than 10. Um, and the same thing with, I don't know if you can scroll up to see uh, audio, choose a file, PDF. Only one PDF should be loaded and no more than 10 pages. Um, and there's the space to do a YouTube link if you want to provide video. And there's a little bit of space, very few, 20, 250 characters just to describe um, what's most important that we need to know about your work sample. So um, if it was a theater piece, you might wanna tell us the name of the piece 
were you the actor? Were you the, um, the playwright? You know, we need to know what your relationship is to this work. Same thing if it's a dance, is that you I'm seeing dancing or were you the choreographer? And this is one of the artists that you put the work on. So that's it. And then we have demographic information. Please know that the demographic information is not used by the panel and, and it's not shown when we do the panel um, process and it's not used for the application. We aggregate the demographic information and then we're able to look at who's applied and who are we reaching and who are we not reaching. So it's really important to us, but it's internal. Um, you can prefer um, not to identify in any of these categories or if you wanna help us collect this really important information for our community, we encourage you to do that. And that is the entire application. Um, so I will go back to the Q&A and um, that's really the presentation. So if you don't wanna stay around for the rest of the Q&A, um, feel free to um, leave at any time. But if you wanna get more of your questions answered, we'll um, stay for a bit longer and answer some questions. Um, okay, can we submit two types of work samples? Yes, I think we've already answered that. Um, can the video be of multiple images if the work is visual? In that case, I would much, much rather have individual JPEGs images. Um, it's not as effective, and I've been on many, many panels where you've seen videos of images. It feels, for some reason, when you're in a video, it feels really static. If you feel like that's the only way you can do it, um, you know, you're welcome to do it, but it's just not the best way to present visual work. Um, now that's sort of the same thing. Can your video include photo stills? I would say, again, really um, lean into if it's video, make sure it's action. Um, no, you cannot apply um, as a team. I'm so sorry. This is really for an individual artist. Um, so each of you could apply separately um, for different projects. I wouldn't apply for the same project because only one application, one project, or one of you can choose to apply um, and then choose to pay the other artists to do some work on the project if that's the way you want to approach it. But this is really, again, to get um, funds into the hands of individuals. Um, if you're an artist working in, oh, that's pretty much the same question, a collaboration, would you be eligible? Same thing that I just said, absolutely you're eligible, but you decide who is the app applying artist. How about description of images? Um, I, if you're saying you want to put in some text that describes in detail your images, I wouldn't do that. It's really um, when the panel looks at the work samples, this is the tough part is they really are looking at your technical ability. They're looking at your skill. They're looking at your originality, all of those things. And they just want to see the work. Um, you, they don't want you to have to describe it. They want it to come out in the work. So um, your description of who you are as an artist can come out in your artist statement or your project concept, but don't describe your images. Where on the website can you sign up for a time with the mentor? Um, if you go to our website, and if Diana could maybe put it in the chat, but it's arts.cityofsacramento.org, and you go to the page for grants, and then you go to um, grants for individual artists, and this grant will be listed there, and um, signing up with a mentor is right there on that page. Um, do the professional histories need to be at venues in Sacramento County? Good question. No, they don't. I mean, that's that's something that um, we are not going to, you know, penalize you for, you know, performing somewhere else. We just want to see that you have a professional history. So um, you can mix it up or put it wherever it is. Um, can you please note the link? Um, I said it, but maybe if Diana can put it in the chat, then you can find it. Um, if you have a pre-existing project that is looking to expand, but you need to research on how to grow it, would it be applicable to the research section? Um, if you could make a really good case that the research is taking it to 
kind of a new project. I mean, I think you would really have to, um, the research obviously would be new, but how would this research um, advance a project that went off in a different direction? We don't really necessarily want you just to be doing research to kind of keep um, an ongoing project going. We wanna really make room for new projects. Um, YouTube account shouldn't reveal our identity. Um, I guess I'm not sure if I understand that question. So if somebody wants to just add a little detail, that would be helpful. Um, let's see, is app development included as a discipline? Um, if you consider it, I mean, you'd really have to look at the disciplines and make a case for it if it's under, depends on the kind of app it is. Is it under design? Um, it's still, is it under media arts? It still needs to fall within the categories that we have there um, if it's, um, you know, and then again, make a good case for it. If I'm a painter doing a video project, do I include 10 images of paintings and also submit clips of video projects to show my competence in video, the two will relate in my proposal. Um, no, the cl video clips cannot have text to identify them or give them context. Um, you can use the little work sample um, description to do that. Um, I wonder you say video clips, remember that they're looking at five minutes only. So um, are these clips so short that you're gonna have multiple clips or you can you do it in, in one clip, um, but yes, that sounds like that sounds like an example of something that you probably want to show your work as a painter, and then show the video project that you want to do. If they're very disconnected, again, think really carefully in your project concept how you can tie them together without knowing more. It's hard for me to give you more info. Um, if you're a managing executive director, your project is just your own. No. I'm so sorry. That's just one thing that we decided on very early in the process. Again, because we, you know, we there are a lot of artists who don't have any positions in an organization um, who are just trying to get this work done on their own. And we did in this application because we could only fund 45 artists, and there are probably going to be hundreds that um, are applicable. We wanted to spread the funds out as much as possible. So um, sorry about that. How important is it for project to connect to Sacramento in some way? Um, um, I think you have to go with where your work is. And I can't imagine that we're gonna have 45 projects that are all gonna be specifically related to you know, life and work in Sacramento. They should really be, you know, who you are as an artist and how you um, advance your craft. For example, if you are, a, you know, a basket maker and you work in a very traditional craft, which is, you know, passed down from generations, that's not specific necessarily to Sacramento, but it's specific to your, um, your work and your growth as an artist. So um, I think stay true to yourself is what I would tell you. Are we able to save our progress on the application and return back to it and complete it? Yeah, I do. I do think you can. Yes. Just make sure wherever there's a save button on any page at any time, click save. And I also, <clears throat> excuse me, drink this. If you are working on your artistic um, statement and your project concept, I would recommend working on that offline. And then when you got it, um, into a place that you feel comfortable. Just, I mean, we all lose information and in applications and I wouldn't want you to put hours into something and then find out you lost it, so. Um, if a location is needed to work, would site rental be covered? Yes, it is covered, but again, you know, you're getting $10,000, so it's your choice how you want to spend that money. And if that's important to you, you could certainly use it for site rental. Are poets eligible for this grant? Um, they are not only eligible, but they're encouraged. Would, sam work, would samples have to be published? No, but, if, but you will have to show your work history. So if you're a poet who's actually performed your poetry in certain places, um, 
put those in your work sample history, or if you've been, um, I don't know, just think about ways you can document that you've done your work professionally. It's just, it's always that funny way of like, well, what does it mean to like document that you're a professional artist? And um, we have to go back and forth because in every discipline and every circumstance, things could, you know, be different. So we're just trying to kind of find that sweet spot where you can show us your work, but we're not like asking you too much. Um, if you submit two work samples, can it include all 10 digital images and a five minute video? Yes, it can. Again, do it only if it's necessary. Don't do it because you feel like more is better. More is more, yeah. In the application portal as of Monday, yes, thank you um, for telling us that was not an option. And I was uh, contacted by a potential applicant and it has been fixed. And I appreciate your telling us it was in the original list. And when you're taking things from a Word document and you're bringing them over, sometimes they get lost. And um, I thank our applicants for catching those for us because obviously that was important to put back. So, yeah. Um, if my project consists of social media presentations, but now I want to do in person presentations. How would I present my samples to you? Um, yeah, submit your social media presentations. If you have not done them in person, sure, that would be, that would be perfectly fine. Um, if someone is a studio artist painter, does the work need to be displayed somewhere at the end of the period? No, no, you can just make the work, just make sure that you enter the pathway under creation. Um, we would love to display the artwork or, you know, at least some representation on our website just to show that you made the work because that's wonderful. Um, does a working artist define as someone who receives pay? Many artists have produced work for free. That's very true. And there's nothing in it that says um, you have to prove that you've been paid for the work that you do, just that we see that you've been places and you know, we all know actors who perform for free in many different venues and people who, you know, support the arts. So just please put your information in. But no, we never ask if you've been paid. Does my timeline have to go all the way until 2023? No, we're at, oh, no, no, um, no. I'm not sure how the money, we have not determined how the money will be allocated. Um, if the film is done sooner, then the timeline is sooner. I'm not sure. We may have to have a final report before we can allocate all of the money. But yeah, no, it doesn't have to stretch the whole year. <clears throat> Will there be a place to show a final visual pro project? Certainly on our website. Um, and we are going to have, and I, I probably didn't talk about this enough, we are going to have project mentors that are going to be there along with you to um, you know, answer questions, help keep you on track, help check in with you periodically to make sure that the project's ready for completion, excuse me, to brainstorm with you. Um, we also hope to provide um, some levels of professional development, whether it be, you know, how to sell your work or portfolio development or documentation or whatever we feel like you as creative artists could use to just help your practice move forward. And again, that will be, you know, that will be free to you and um, we'll make that open to everybody. And, you know, hopefully have opportunities for those funded artists to get together and share some of their resources. Could the final project include a fundraising aspect? Absolutely not. That is one thing that's um, not, um, eligible and you'll find that in the attachments would so be really that's why I say go and look at um, uh, the addendums at the end of the guidelines because they will tell you specifically fundraising is not allowed. Um, if I have run a test show but want to make a series of shows based off of it would I still be eligible as a new program? Yes apply as a new program. I mean this sounds like something different um, you could talk about, you know, the research or the preliminary work that you've put into it, but um, apply as a new program. 
do you come to the studio to review it or do we not need to find a place to show it? Um, um, no, we don't come to, I'd love to come to the studio and see it, but um, no, we, uh, you know, again, if you're creating visual artwork, then the creation is your project. We would ask you to take photos of it and document it so we could put it on our website to show people what you did. But if you're saying your work is presentation, that means you're obliged to find the place to present the work. So if my thing is to present my work in a gallery and pay for the gallery and um, give an artist talk, that's totally up to you to pay for that and to find the space. Um, and that's why I say, make sure that you pre present something that's doable because if you do all that work and, and, and present it forward as in the application, and then at the end you say, well, I couldn't find a place, we would really like literally have to ask you to give us the money back um, because it's federal funding. Art installation in a gallery, um, it doesn't tell me enough. Um, you know, again, think of the pathways. Are you creating or are you presenting? Um, and if you're presenting, um, can you make that idea sound unique enough, original enough, exciting enough, interesting enough, so that a panel is going to want to say that we want to move this project forward? Um, can you expand by what you mean by community engagement? Um, geez, community engagement is um, what's the community's role? And community is how you define your community or the community that you work in. What's their role with the work? Were they involved with you in the creation of it? Were they involved before the creation of it? Um, do you seek their input in any way? Um, are you just basically trying to get them to come to a performance? Um, there are different types of engagement and some of it's really deep and some of it is just something that we all do because you know, as artists, we all have to engage in communities in some way, um, but is that, does that in community feel some level of ownership or participation um, in the project? And that's something that you could easily, you know, break down with one of your mentors if you're talking to a mentor. Um, does the um, exhibition gallery opening event of the period qualify as a disincluded public project? Um, no. Um, I, I don't think you can pay for like catering and food and things like that. That's not part of um, what's included. Um, but again, um, look at your pathway. Are you creation or are you presentation? And are you making a good case for it? So I think that's this, I, I would have the same answer for all of these things. Um, project is before the timeline. Can I showcase it? Yes, absolutely. We are not, um, we're not vetting your final project. If you tell us that you've done the final project and you can document it, um, then we're good with that. Um, are you eligible if you receive grant money from a completely different organization? Sure. Um, if you're a visual artist, graffiti, muralist, can you create a performance-based project that includes the elements of hip hop, graffiti, breakdancing, and DD? Absolutely. Sounds good. Would a series oops, of music videos in conjunction with a music album be considered media, arts, or music? That might be a case that you might want to choose two. Uh, there was that option to choose two, and it sounds like that's a good example of um, two disciplines. And you could make, then you would explain why you were two disciplines. Is there room for more mentors? I love to, I think all the mentors we, already um, contracted with, and you can't be a mentor and be an artist that's receiving funding or applying for funding. Um, I think I've answered that question about the public viewing. Um, if you're an artist who's also enrolled in a STEM like undergraduate degree program who is not full-time student, no, you're not disqualified, as we said, would be a full-time program. Um, are we allowed to collaborate with other organizations as part of our community impact? Um, 
Absolutely, we would love to see that happen. But remember, this application is yours, and it will be based on, you know, who you are, the strength of your relationships with that community. Are you demonstrating it in your project concept that I'm not just saying, oh, I've got to find a community-based organization to make my application better. We really want to see that you already um, do collaborate with community-based organizations so your idea is so strong that there's this one organization that will be part of our work. But we're really looking at your um, qualifications and the organization is just something that you help to, to describe. Yeah, it did make sense, thanks. Is there a PDF or something similar of the application? Um, no, there's not a PDF, sorry about that. You just have to go into the application. But um, again, you could probably just cut and paste the, um, the questions and put them somewhere else. Um, I, oh, I'm, okay. All right, I'm doing a music project with my video and audio combo upload of my performance. Can it be in music video format? Like where I use my creative artistic skills to create or does need to be a simple live take video to focus on the music project itself? I think it makes sense. Um, I think the only, if it's making sense to me and I'm reading it the way but I think you're asking it and feel free to tell me that's not how you're asking it. Um, what we don't want you to do is give us a video where you're talking about how you create the work. Um, if it's a music video, show us a music video. If it's a simple live take, show us a simple live, either one would be fine, but don't tell us about your process. We just wanna see the work. Um, if we don't recall the exact date of the event, can we simply use the month? Yes, thank you, you can. It's unclear from the application whether you can put, for instance, 10 photos and then also a YouTube link or whether you should just pick one of these categories, so only 10. Um, it does say on the application, and again, it's probably underneath the question, so that's why it gets confusing, um, that you can submit up to two formats. If you submit more than that, we are gonna just pull them out and Again, I want you to be in control of what's in there. Don't put the control into other people's hands. So just please read, read, read the instructions that are underneath every category and um, be conscious of that. But yes, you can do both if it's needed. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, did we? Uh, I was just wondering if we misspelled it again, because we went in there and put African-American. So we'll go back there and make sure that everything is fine. So thank you for that. Um, is the PDF used to list of submitted works? No, 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 no. The PDF is only if you're um, submitting for a written type of work. So if you are a, um, a writer, an author, a poet, a playwright, that's, those are the only PDFs we want. We won't look at any PDFs that explain the work or describe the work. That's really only for artists working in that format. Um, does demographics not factor into the decision or all, or did I misunderstand that? Thank you. Um, um, demographics are not part of the decision. We are a city agency and we can't use demographics to make a decision about um, who gets funding and who does not. That's really something, again, we aggregate and then we look at the whole picture um, of the demographics, and we've got a lot of different categories. It's, you know, it's by race, but it's also age. And it's also, um, you know, we're very specific about if you're living with a disability, just things that we wanna know about our applicant pool again. So um, if it looks like there were overrepresented in some areas, we can't get overrepresented, but if we're underrepresented in certain areas, what can we do to make sure that we are reaching out more? We are um, doing as much outreach work on this application as possible and going into communities and we'll have a postcard out and we encourage you to tell all of your friends and colleagues about it so that we're not missing um, people that don't normally hear about what we do. There are people who always hear about what the Office of Arts and Culture are doing and are able and have applied for everything that we've done. And then there are people who say, I never heard about that. Like, so we have to make inroads into those communities. So if someone makes Hmong dance regalia and folk art, could we list where the regalia or art was used? 
Yes, absolutely. Thank you. That's really um, a good call. And obviously for something like that certainly falls within the folk art um, category. And yes, I would do that. That's a great way to look at it. Um, can we please drop um, the website in the chat? I'm hoping Diana can do that. Um, can you submit a resume or a CD? No, no resumes, no CDs. We won't look at them. We're really asking you to tell us um, who you are just based on those little categories. CVs are, you know, they, they favor certain types of artists and um, they don't favor other artists. And we want to give all types of art um, a level playing field here. So we're not looking at those. Um, can you save your app and finish it later? Yes. Can the five minute video be all the best shots from different videos? Um, it can be what I would say, and you know, hopefully we'll try to do something on work samples later, but really have, have people that don't know your work or have friends or have people who are really brutally honest with you, look at your five minute video and tell you whether, um, they're excited by what they see when they um, look at your five minute video. Make sure other people get their eyes on it before you submit it. It's so important. Um, and if it's too disjointed um, and you're feeling like more is better, just make sure that you, um, you know, get some critique on it from other people. We can't critique it. I can't tell you what a good video or a bad video um, is. If you showed it to me, it's not my job to tell you what to put in it, but get people that you trust and people that um, know this world and they could really help you. Recent, oh, let's see. So recent publication or public presentation of your art is a requirement for the grant. Yeah, but we're pretty open about recent. Again, we talked um, about you know, the last five years and demonstrating that at least two of the years are, um, you know, in the last, you know, whatever, the recent years. Um, just because again, we, we, have to, we have to set some parameters so that we have a, a pool of applicants that, you know, are working in the arts right now. I mean, again, this is to put money into the hands of people who are creating artwork as we speak. Um, so if it's something that you've done, you know, 10 or 15 years ago, and you look at this application and say, oh, well, this might be a nice um, model, but, you know, we really want to be able to support people who are doing it now. And I think we're pretty open in what we mean by working now. Um, if I'm a writer, can I note the times I have read my writings to others during a writing cir circle monthly meeting, I would, I, yes, but I would probably only put that as one um, in one category. Just, I, I don't think it's, I don't think it's going to serve you to put a list of like, you know, September, October, November, December, you know, something like that. Um, a lot of people are asking about saving your application. Yes, you can save it. Yes, you can come back to it later. Just make sure you press save. There is no PDF of the application. Um, I have visual arts that have received media attention. No, um, can I submit to a link of, <clears throat> can I submit a link to the video regarding the paintings? Um, no, we don't wanna see any kind of media attention or I mean, that falls into the realm of promotional materials. Um, we want the work to speak for itself. That's really what we want the panel to be able to look at. Um, I looked at the page and did not see a link to sign up for mentors. Is it already live? Um, it was this morning. So um, if it doesn't have the link, um, we'll go back this evening or tomorrow morning and check and make sure it's already there. Um, there's a possibility that the slots were filled. And if so, we'll find a way to open up more slots. So keep checking. Um, more questions. What if you've written plays and fiction and you want to venture and create a graphic novel for the project, should you submit your past written plays as work samples? Sure. And just, you know, kind of say what you said here that we've, I've been working in this format and my goal has always been to do a graphic novel. Um, you probably then would want to submit some kind of indication of your skills as, you know, being able to do a graphic novel, but sounds interesting. Um, 
Yeah, I'm sorry that it is frustrating um, that people really are struggling and it doesn't mean that, I know that you're, you could be being paid by an organization and it doesn't mean that the money is going to your art. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I absolutely get it. Um, and that's why we were so specific that it's somebody who is the artistic director, the managing director, or the executive director of an organization. If you work for an organization and you don't have any of those kind of overarching roles, you are eligible to apply. But we, we had to create some kind of limitations and they're certainly not gonna make everybody happy. Um, do we have to fundraise the amount we're asking you to match? Can you share? There's no match to this, and I'm, I'm hoping that you're not confusing this with the other IOB grant, which was a matching grant. This is $10,000 to um, do the work. We, your project needs to be able to be completed with this $10,000. Um, so if you have to raise additional funds, um, that is, that's going to be difficult because this project has to be completed. So if you can't do it for $10,000 or you don't already have the other resources, we would probably say don't apply for that project. As I'm working on my project, can I create partnerships with organizations as part of my research or as a venue to exhibit the completed work? Absolutely. That's, um, that's great. Um, that's um, we're going to be, again, we're not going to be looking at your partners or partnerships. We're going to, I mean, you certainly should list them, but again, it's going to come down to your project and the work that you want to do, but certainly, um, yeah, list projects. Um, can the 10 images be 10 collages? If the work is collage only, please don't, don't mess around with like the potential to put more into less, um, that's not gonna serve your work. But if your work is collage, yeah, sure. Can I send you the YouTube link at which the work is posted already? Um, you put it in the application. Don't, don't send anything to us that's not in the application um, itself. Um, I'm a painter who would like to explore sculpture in my project. However, my visual examples would be paintings only. Would this be a hindrance? Um, if your paintings are strong and can stand on their own and you make um, a really good case for why you wanna explore something else, I think that's what artists do. So go ahead and do that. Just make sure you're connecting. It's like you're, you're creating a little bridge between everything that you submit. And then when you look at it all together, you can see your application as like a whole product. Um, is this grant right for new artists or those wanting to change genres? Um, you could be an early career artist, um, probably not good for a brand new artist who doesn't at least have three years of history um, behind them. So, um, but certainly not specifically to anybody who wants to change genres. Please feel free to continue to work in what you're working in. Um, can mentors help answer questions I still have after this webinar? I have, yes, I think they probably can. That's the point of having these um, mentors. Um, if you're submitting as a creator and established in your craft, are you still eligible if you would require additional training, which the fund would support to complete the proposed project? Yes. To clarify, are you eligible if you receive grant money from a different organization for the same project? No, this should be a completely new project. So if you're getting money from another organization and you want, you have another thing that you would like to work on, feel free to apply, but um, this is new projects. I want to teach art to children for free. Would that qualify somehow? Yes, that would qualify under, um, Remember, it's performance presentation. So teaching art to children would be the presentation, but make sure that you're really clear that you have access to the children and all of this can be completed in the period. Um, is there a disadvantage to include a few images of work shown as part of an installation as opposed to just 10 single works? 
Um, I don't think there's any disadvantage. And 10 is just a maximum number. Don't think that I've got to really scrounge up 10 samples. Um, no, no disadvantage. Just make sure that the work is really well photographed and well, um, you know, it's, it's creating a strong visual. Is there a means to physically supply the application rather than online for people without direct access to the internet? Um, that's something that we will definitely help you with. Um, so um, check in with, um, there is, um, there's an email address that if maybe Diana can put it in the chat and it's arts, um, I think it's artsgrants at cityofsacramento.org. Um, and feel free to email me with those kinds of questions and we will definitely um, work to help you with that, absolutely. Um, and if I don't have public showings in the last three years, but I've sold paintings directly to people or done commissions, can I include that in the professional history? Yes, yes, absolutely, you can. Um, do we get online confirmation after we submit the application? Um, I'm gonna defer to Diana on this. I'm pretty sure you do, because I'm pretty sure I saw it up, came up in the application that says, thank you, thank you for submitting the application. Yes, you'll be notified once your application is submitted please note that once you do submit your application, you cannot go back in and edit. So if you don't wanna submit yet, just hit save. And then um, if you have accidentally hit submit, you would need to ask us for permission to reopen your application. That's, I'm so glad you brought that up, Diana. That's a great point. Um, if you feel really energized tonight and you wanna go in there and like complete the entire application and upload everything, there's no advantage for you to submit today. Um, give it some time, let it sit, go back and look at it, think about your work samples, think about what you're doing. Um, really take your time on this one. There, again, you, there's no advantage of being the first one in and you've got um, a month to look at this application. I don't, I, I'm not encouraging you to wait till 1159 on the day it's due. Um, but really take some time and make sure you feel comfortable. Again, um, we do have mentors, but you probably know people in your life who are, um, as I say, honest and helpful and could look at your application and tell you if you put your best foot forward. So um, yeah, thanks. Save it and don't submit right away. That's probably a good idea. Um, is this funded by ARPA? Yes, but it's not the city's ARPA bucket, the one that you've heard about that we've gotten, we had to actually go out and apply to the National Endowment for the Arts for this program. And it was a competitive process. So we were really fill, filled, thrilled, excuse me, that we got the full amount and we were able to regrant it to this community because you know we knew this was needed. So, but, but again, it does come from that federal ARPA uh, bucket, so. There we go. We answered 116 questions and here's one more. If you're doing a final project of making music videos, but you'd need someone else to physically film, but you're going to edit it, is that still eligible? Again, remember it's your project. So you're the music video person who is submitting it and anybody else that works on it is somebody that you choose to hire with the money that you have. Um, I haven't looked at the application, but is there a size and resolution requirement for the images? Um, that's a good question. I think this allows for um, pretty robust size. So um, submit the best resolution that you possibly can and the application should um, uh, certainly handle it. And I think we're talking mostly about um, digital images because the video is gonna be um, just a YouTube link. Okay, and at that, um, I think we're gonna end this webinar. We've kept you here for a really long time. Um, we uh, please check the website for additional support from the mentors. Um, check in with us if you have um, additional questions and we'll try to answer them as much as possible. Um, again, if you go to that arts.cityofsacramento, um, arts grant, excuse me, at cityofsacramento.org. Um, that's the best place to email me because I check that periodically and it doesn't get lost amid 
hundreds of other emails. So um, if you have questions, go back and look at this video again, and we'll try to provide um, more support as we go along, as we see that it's needed. Um, but I encourage everybody apply. You have nothing to lose except to apply and um, hopefully get awarded this grant. So thanks everybody. Thank you.